We began the week trying to come to terms with an attempt to assassinate former President Trump and ended it with his being nominated as the Republican presidential candidate. As investors focused more intently just what a second Trump term could mean for them. So our one more thought this week comes from a Republican member of the House Financial Services Committee, Congressman French Hill of Arkansas, and how things might be different from what we saw during President Trump's first term in office. I think President Trump comes into this position in a tougher economic scenario, but more experienced in the sense that he had four years in office and he knows many of the challenges that our presidents face and how to work with Congress. But how does extending the tax cuts from 2017 help that situation? Because again, CBO is projecting that in fact only 20 percent of those tax cuts actually paid for themselves. They right. did not pay for themselves. Yeah. So how does extending that improve the situation fiscally? I think he's going to have to work with Congress to determine uh, on those that are expiring how to focus on growth and focus on responsibility given the now budget deficit uh, the unsustainable budget deficit I think he's inheriting from what would be his predecessor. This is a bipartisan challenge. Spending in Washington is a bipartisan challenge and trying to find a way to balance the budget is a bipartisan. No one has clean hands here. But I am saying he's going to be constrained in spending uh, authorities and constrained uh, in picking and choosing and working with Congress on how to deal with the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act expiration. I think it's going to be very difficult in the first few days. What are some other constraints? The need for national defense spending. We have never had more people challenging U.S., our allied nations, and Western values like now. The axis of evil that George, Bush, George W. Bush talked about decades ago, now, is really in fruition and in full flower. North Korea, China, Russia, Iran, and their proxies are actively challenging and actively at war with America and American allies at home from a terror threat elevation and abroad. So that's a constraint on how to have spending priorities. And this is why I argue that we need a solid president, uh, vice president, active, working seven days a week, 24 hours a day, working with Congress to face the realities that we have. You mentioned trade and tariffs. Uh, some people who are close to President Trump say that would be a revenue source, so it would be good on the deficit. At the same time, a lot of economists are saying it also is inflationary, because although it does put money in the Treasury, it doesn't come from China, it doesn't come from foreign countries, it comes from U.S. consumers in higher prices. How do you b both raise tariffs and avoid inflation? Smart question. I think there are two uh, reversals of the global trend that we witnessed in our career over the past three decades. One of them is uh, having redundant supply chains, not single source, not just in time, and reshoring, uh, having uh, those supply chains in maybe safer hands than just the lowest cost provider in an Asian nation, like China, for example. That's going to cost money and time. That's an inflationary trend. And you're right. Across the board tariffs, uh, if put in place and left in place, are inflationary. It's a tax, and it is borne by the American consumer. I think where President Trump demonstrated uh, his ability to negotiate was using them, as I said earlier, as a cudgel to bring people to the table for a positive outcome, not just simply leave them in place. And I'm concerned, for example, and I spoke out uh, in general opposition to the across-the-board steel and aluminum tariffs back early in the administration when they were imposed the first time, saying, demonstrate to me that you actually see across the board in steel and aluminum domestic product manufacturing new production as opposed to just higher prices. And I, I still think that's a mixed uh, report. And that's why I think you have to use tariffs very targeted and obtain the trade benefits. And I, I do believe that uh, former Ambassador Lighthouser, who advised President Trump, did achieve that in several places. Japan, um, China selectively, and then they had a big success with redoing the North American Free Trade Agreement into the USMCA. Um, so again, it's a, it, it, we are cognizant. We're in a different situation than we were in 2016 from a macroeconomic point of view.